Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. That I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of. The duties of the office of. Clerk of the Village of Homer Glen. Clerk of the Village of Homer Glen. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. trustee that's going to be sworn in. She is a trustee with the township right now. She wanted to wait until her last meeting, which, would have, which will be May 11th. So on May 13th, she will be sworn in as the last trustee. And then we've got a great team to work with here. And with that being said, we have cake and we have drinks, I believe, back there. So if someone could cut the cake and I should touch the cake. 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 I should touch the Similar. Yes, that's what you might have. Oh, you're right. It's good. I'm tall enough. I can, I can be right there. Right. All right. Now, you want to. Oh, this 
Congratulations to all the newly elected people. Thank you. And you'll hear more from me, I'm sure, later on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Wayne, Chair Brother. <laughs> Wayne Fairbrother, 14459 Provencal Drive, Homer Glen. Again, I'd like to congratulate all the new trustees and the mayor on their election to the office. Uh, I would, uh, the comment I have is I would like to see the village manager or the finance director more fully discuss the Chicago Tribune article of two weeks ago about the Homer Glen's investment in the uh, muni municipal investment fund and their loss and fraud involved in that and the reported loss of $837,000 to Homer Glen. They can either talk about this meeting or next meeting. Thank you. If it's okay with you, uh, John's not here right now. Is it something we can put on the? Absolutely, be happy to give you a report. And um, I would just say this real quick. Uh, John just said, "Thank you." But say this real quick. Um, I have a lot of respect for the media, but the media always reports things as loss. Okay, it's not a loss. Okay, there was theft that happened. <clears throat> Uh, they're recouping, uh, working very hard to recoup money that was stolen. Um, but I understand the Tribune's need to use the word loss, but it, it isn't officially a loss. But we will report on it, absolutely. Okay, Wayne. Uh, last, Lynn McGarry. Uh, Lynn McGarry, 14104 Garrett Avenue, Orland Park, Homer Glen, the Homer Township Chamber of Commerce, and me. 
want to extend our congratulations to you, the, good, the new trustees and the village clerk on your victory in the April 7th election. And we look forward to working with you on all the issues that impact the business community. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Linda. Okay, that's it for public comment right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Can I ask anyone to Sure. I need about a sign letter. How much? Can I do whatever I want? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can anyone do happy with me? We're all happy with you. Well, I, I don't know. All right. Uh, <laughs> everybody is for a grand committee, you and, and our new board member. But we have a few people who have been on the board that deserve our attention. And they said it in the last minute. You have all done a wonderful job, and I will keep an eye on you all, <laughs> as I always have. But one thing, the love of my town is administered through you. And keep that in your faith, in your credo, in your model, in your heart. Because all of us who love it for it, and the generations to follow <coughs> will honor you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Get away, Bobby. <laughs> All right, we have uh, legislative and action items. Pretty much the only thing we have on it tonight is we are going to consider the approval of a contract for landscape maintenance services for the village property at 14240 West 151st Street with r, &R Yard Design out of Madison, Illinois. Uh, there are five options that we can pick from on this. And what we had talked about at the last meeting was uh, what we want to do is hear from the village on whether we're going to do something with Woodbine Golf Course to keep it open, or if we're just going to close it right off the bat. But with that being said, I just want to make sure the whole village understands that right now we're paying the fees for it. If we do open up the golf course, we're going to try to work it out to where there is no cost to the village at all. They'll maintain the golf course, they'll cut the grass, they'll fertilize it, they'll keep all the people that live around Woodbine, it affects the most, happy. They'll have the golf course open. They keep the money for this year because right now, if they did decide to go in there, we're not giving them a lot of time and they're going to be putting in a lot of work. So what we want to do is we want to hire the uh, landscape company to maintain it for right now. If someone does decide to come in, then the uh, landscape company, they can either work for them or be up to, uh, to the, who's ever running the golf course to do it. Uh, so with that being said, there are... Like I said, there's five options, and I guess I'll read through them just to let you know. Uh, I'm going to read the following five options for the board to consider regarding the landscape maintenance services for the future Village Hall Park property. Uh, this would be a, on a per cut, per application basis for a limited time as a future use of this property is contemplated by the Village Board. Option one is to approve a contract with r, &R -E Design for landscape maintenance services for a future Village Park property in the amount of $1,997.50 per cut and $3,600 per application of both fertilizer and weed control. 100 feet around the property only. It is understood that this option does not include specialized maintenance <coughs> to preserve the existing greens or tees or fairways. Option two is to approve a contract with r, &R Yard Design for landscape maintenance services for the future Village Park in the amount of $2,578.75 per cut and $3,600 per application for both fertilizer and weed control, and again with 100 foot parameter. And again, it does not uh, maintain or preserve the existing greens, tees, and fairways. Option three is to approve a contract with R&R Yard Design for landscape maintenance services for the future Village Park property in the amount of $3,608.75 per cut and $6,871.30 per application for fertilizer only doing the entire property. This option does include specialized cutting of the greens, tees, and fairways. However, this option does not include weed control on the property. Option four is to approve a contract with R&R Yard Design for the future park 
in the amount of $3,608.75 per cut, $7,280.82 per application of weed control only for the entire property. This option does also include cutting the greens, teas, fairways. However, it does not include fertilizing the property. Option five is to approve a contract with r, &R in the amount of $3,608.75 per cut, $6,871.30 per application of fertilizer only, entire property, $7,280.82 per application of weed control on the entire property. This option does include specializing cuts of the greens, teas, and fairways. Like I said, what we're going to do is when we when we put this out to bid, what, eight months ago, nine months ago, one bid came back at $29,000. I'm pretty sure everyone in here knew that that was not going to happen. When we sent the bid out for the second time, and this is to keep it as a golf course, the bid came back at $150,000 to $214,000. So, like I said, we don't have this in the budget to pay. We can put it in there, but it's something that I don't feel the taxpayers should be paying. So, what I was thinking on it, and I've kind of brought it up since all this disaster happened, is get someone in there to run it until we find out what we're going to do with Woodbine. Right now, you cannot use it for anything except for walking around as a park. You can't put the sports in there, and obviously you wouldn't be able to have golfers in there if no one's going to maintain it. Uh, we have to have an engineer go in there to find out what we can do to it. We have to correct the flooding problem that is affecting Woodbine and part of uh, the Creek. So if they do correct it, they might have to come back to dump the water in the golf course, so they're going to have to tear up some of the golf course. But with all this being done, you're still looking at least two to four years before anything could be determined of what we're going to do, figure out what the park plan is going to be, and then figure out where we're going to get the money to pay for it. I'm a firm believer in not raising taxes. So we're trying to do this to where there's no cost for anyone in the village to, for us to be able to do what we want to do with the park. But we're going to leave it up to the residents of the village. We will have a special meeting on May 20th where you can come in, say your piece, and at the end of it, we should decide real quick because if we're not going to keep it a golf course, it would be senseless to pay all the money to maintain it as a golf course. Then the prop, then the uh, job I'm pretty sure will drop down to, I don't have the figures in front of me, but I want to say it was around 68000 a year to, to just cut the grass. That wouldn't be uh, fertilizing it and weed, weed feeding it, so uh, we're going to leave it up to the residents. But for right now, what we want to do is pick an option, let's get the golf course getting cut, because if they are going to keep it, we need to do something now or it's going to be too late. So with that being said, uh, Basically, what I need now is I need a motion for option, whatever you're going to do with this, and any discussion. I'll make a motion for option two. Option two is to basically just cut the cut the park, uh, not to maintain the greens, tees, and the fairways. It does. No, it does include. It does include. Option two does. Yes. Oh, okay. Take that back, it does. That would be $2,578.75 per cut, $3,600 for uh, application of both fertilizer and weed control, around a 100 foot perimeter. So, and this would uh, preserve the existing greens, tees, and fairways. So, do I have a second to number two? I second. Madam Clerk, would you call oh, I questions. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Is the uh, is uh, R &R here? Yes, yes, right up here. Would you want to go up to the podium? Yes. Uh, I, I was any just questions they've got. Just okay. Answer. But in the future, when this goes to, go to a park, <coughs> do you recommend for always fertilizing and weed control, or is that something because you don't have to? Would it be done maybe once every other year? Of course, we would recommend it. Um, your best. Your best value would be in the fall. Fertilize it in the fall, and you'll be healthy enough for the summer. Um, now, coming from a golf course background, you know, it's seven to ten times the amount of fertilizer a normal yard is. Um, you know, the value of the course, the course is in great shape. 
It could be a very, very nice public course. It could be a nice park district course also. And of course, that's up to you guys and what you want to do. Um, but the fertilizer would be an asset for it. It would keep it nice, keep it growing, make it thicker. And of course, you know, the thicker the grass, the less weeds you have. So, and also, I, ju I would just like to say, option two does not include the fairways. Oh, because then I have a typo here. Yes, and I, Scott and I did talk about this. Oh. So, option three was fairways. Fairways in the original bid. We just had the greens and greens. Okay, so it does. Okay. Yeah, because I think we talked about that. Yeah. Okay. Are you cutting all of the grass? Because um, I know there's a difference between a fairway and a rough. Right. Although the, I, that's what I've been told. <coughs> right. The original RFP was for cutting everything as right. park district grass. Right. Except the T's and fairways, or the T's and greens were an option. Right. So. But then to go back and cut if they decide that it's going to be a golf course and they want they want you to mow the fairways. Go it's in the fairways. very, very hard to get them to come back. Okay. Um, if you do decide to let it go to park grass and <coughs> down the line, you know, next year or whatever, you decide you want to bring the greens, the T's and the fairways back, you're going to have to tear them up and reseed them completely, mm -hmm. which would be over half a million dollars, just a rough estimate. To reseed the, did you say the greens? The greens, tees, and fairways. If, we don't take care of so, if you don't maintain it as a golf course. So you're saying that if they want to if there's any prospect of using it as a golf course, in addition to doing the greens and the tee boxes, they need to mold the fairways in Correct. fairways now. Correct. Okay. As opposed to <laughs> the letting it go. Yes. Okay. So what we could uh, do, if I could, what we could do is we could use option three, but uh, piggyback option two onto three. In other words, you would have the cost that's associated with maintaining everything in option three, but then we could go 100 feet in for the fertilizing and weed control. So it would actually be kind of like an option number six. So we could do that. So, so what we're doing, then, if you go to option three, we're yeah. talking about uh, yeah, option three. Cutting, excuse yeah. me, a thousand dollars more to cut it per week. That's four thousand a month, plus an additional three thousand dollars for the fertilizer. So that's seven thousand more dollars for the month to maintain it. Now, my question to you is that do you have the specialized equipment to cut the greens and tees <coughs> like the golf course? Yes. So the guys are going to be out there by hand, they're going to cut them, they're going to roll them. Yes. Are they going to do any aeration on No, because it was not included with the All right, so just, just keep it cut down yes. the green. Yes. So that if, if the board decides to make it a, a golf course, somebody can walk on there and the greens are ready to play. Yes. Would, uh, just a quick question for me. Uh, it says application of uh, fertilizer only in option three and application of weed control uh, in four. Prices are pretty close. It's four hundred dollars for the weed. Does it have to be fertilized, or <coughs> I mean, it seems like the weeds are the biggest problem. The that's the thing. If, if you want to keep it as a course, I would recommend mowing it as a course. The fertilizer is completely up to the village. Um, if you it will decline a little bit from what it is if it doesn't get any nutrients. Uh, the weed controls, obviously you don't want the weeds to get out of control. Um, if you start <coughs> too many weeds in the, in the greens, teas, and fairways, the chemical that is used is very costly compared to maintaining that. So if it, if it gets overrun with dandelions or crabgrass or anything else, it, it will be much more expensive down the road to maintain it. And the other question is because most of the time you weed it at the beginning of the season and you're set. Does this have to be weeded and uh, weed fed every month? Or is no. This, this is just no. a one shot at the beginning of the year. So after that, basically what you're looking at is $3,600 to cut it every day. Correct. Okay. And of course, you know, if there are weeds here and there, my guys do either pull them or they just spot spray. You know, we all, no matter what, it's always included with our money. Okay, so with that, everyone understands that you know, the big worry would be the weeds rather than the fertilizer. Uh, you're looking at a one-time shot of $7,200. Uh, 
and then it would run $3,600 uh, per cut. So you're going to be probably going to be a minimum of four cuts for the month. So around $18,000, you're around $25,000 for the month. But then after that, it would revert back down to 18 if we kept on cutting it as a golf course. So you guys. So you're option four now. Well, option four, the only reason I'm saying four is uh, the weed control right. is more important than fertilizing right now. Uh, I mean, if, if it came down to someone picking up the golf course and using it, let them do the fertilizing on it. You know, we'll keep it to where it's weed free for the first, you know, for the season, but then after that, someone would have to do the fertilizing. My only question there would be, is, is the golf course feasible this year? <coughs> You went out there and looked at it, didn't you? I would say within one to two weeks, you can go out there and play on it. You can play on it now. It's luckily we've had cool enough weather at nighttime for the past two weeks that the course is not overgrown. Um, for the first week, it will look a little raggy. It will look a little yellow because we are cutting up. You'd be cutting off a lot in the fairway to a, you know to a fairway height. Um, but after the first week or two. I'd, I'd say there'd be absolutely no problem with people golfing on it. I have a question. So this is, a, is this like a monthly contract or is this just per cut? Um, because I mean, we have our meeting uh, in May. It was based on that and then, you know, the gentleman asked for okay. a per cut. The contract will be on a per cut. Okay. So just prices that would be honored if you decide to extend it. Right, okay. Beyond <clears throat> My concern is here is, is we're putting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're talking about spending seven to ten thousand dollars more to maintain as a golf course, and we haven't discussed if we want to keep it a golf course. You know, the board is, has no dollars and cents in front of them. What's research? What it cost us? What kind of an agreement we can have with somebody to, make, to run the golf course? So I, I, wish, I wish we had that in front of us before we're deciding this. You know, I mean, how if you're cutting the greens and, and you're doing, you know, let's say an option two, it could be three weeks from now we say forget it. It's just too costly. There's nobody to manage it. Why should we spend the 10000 or 7000 more dollars if we have no idea what we're going to do with property right now? That's what my concern is. I mean, we spend this kind of money, not even any consensus of the board, any dollars and cents in front of us to see what this is going to cost us. And if there's anybody out there that is willing to sign a contract with our with our terms and conditions. <coughs> so for me, I just say cut the grass, keep the greens short, the, the tees or the greens short, and in the next three weeks do our due diligence. Would you think maybe option three without the fertilizer? You know, we're we're not we're not landscapers. We don't know what that would do. I mean we could probably sit here all night and say, well let's take this out and that out and don't do this and extent i said we just need to make a decision and we don't cut the grass at least now then even as a park it's going to be a hay field you know we don't know what's going to happen in the next three weeks with information that's going to come in front of this board i just don't want to spend seven thousand dollars if we have no information in front of us so but with that said if, if we can this is a per cut basis we could at some point in the near future switch to a different option you could yeah. mm -hmm. okay yes. So I would, I would, but I, would, I would like to interject. If you go and let the fairways go, Understood. then of course it will look. The fairways will look horrible <coughs> if you cut them as park turf and then want to turn back in fairways. And they can go quickly. You're saying three weeks? Yeah. Four weeks. Um, no, I mean to go, you know, to that height of turf, regular you know, sports turf. Pretty quick. So. All right. Well, I agree with Trustee Costa. On, on, see, the problem that we have here is we never not had an opportunity to be able to sit down with someone to actually ask them if they wanted to do it. Uh, but you've got a couple million dollars worth of teas, greens, and everything out there. That's, you hate to have it go to waste if someone can't pick it up and then it doesn't cost the taxpayers anything. So I saw what Trustee Costa was trying to do, and it made sense. But uh, also in two, it does not include the fairways, and it's on a sheet. 
Correct. So if we wanted the, basically the whole park cut, you'd be looking at $3,608.75 and the application to the fertilizer and weed control we can hold off at least till we get to talk to somebody to find out if there's any interest. If yes. not, then yes, then all we're going to do is go to a straight cutting. Yes. Okay. That was that side. So, so it, it would be basically three or four without the weed control or the fertilizer. fertilizer. We control for three weeks. I can see that. And then that way we also get a chance to uh, sit down and talk to somebody to see if they are interested in it. And then when we have the meeting on the 20th, which is three weeks from now, we will have a, a much better idea and we're not wasting any money. There you go. So, so I would have to amend my motion? Correct. Yes. So I amend the motion to accept uh, option four without any further or we can come. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Any more discussion? Madam Clerk, please roll. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, uh, second one on the, uh, on the agenda, this is a real short one. We need to establish a special village board meeting. Uh, we want to get the community meeting to discuss the future use of the Village Hall Park property. So uh, there's a motion to approve a special village board meeting for Wednesday, May 20th at 7 p.m. for the purpose of holding a community meeting to discuss the future use of the new Village Hall Park property. Do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? No, you probably yeah. want to mention the location of the meeting. Oh, well, it should be in the motion. If it's not going to be here, it has to be in the motion. Is the meeting here, Kim? I believe that the intention is to hold it at Woodbine. Mm -hmm. We did discuss it, but it doesn't, it's not listed. Okay. Okay. But that would be part of, it's part of the motion would be to have the meeting on May, May 20th at 7 p.m. at the uh, Woodbine facility. Mm -hmm. This way everyone at the, we had talked about it before. Uh, it gives everyone an opportunity to see what the inside looks like, and we can also inform you of what they plan on doing in there. Okay. Open for discussion. What I'd like to see from now until the 20th, or actually as early as we can, find out if, if, uh, if somebody's interested in doing this. And I think we, as a board, need to know, first off, if we want to pay a fee for someone to do it, or if it's going to be no fee, and someone who comes in, opens a golf course, maintains a golf course, and it's no dollars and cents to the community, no cost whatsoever to the community. <coughs> as far as my opinion is, I don't, I'm don't. i not looking for any, anything either on it. I mean, the village. The main thing is having somebody do it and no cost to the village. And of course, it goes without saying they have to do it um, besides using any part of the existing building. Right. It would have to be done on a, uh, like a trailer type basis. And you have a management agreement from last year, so you've already got the format put together. Right. And I think we need to know that prior to that meeting, because if it's not feasible to even do, why have the meeting? Correct. Correct. Well, we can still find out what they would like to do, but we can be able to tell them yes or no on the golf course. Okay. okay. Is that direction we should do, I'm not quite sure what that direction is, is that direction to do an IP, a public process, to just call up people and ask we, them if we need to find out if anybody's interested. However, we have to do it. Why should we go in a meeting if someone's going to come to us and say, well, you you know, this is what the, it's going to cost the village for me to run this golf course? Because <coughs> I'm going to get something on paper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can work with you on that okay. because given the short time frame, you're not going to have time to put together an hour of being published. No. All right. So everyone understand what we're going to do now? We're going to talk to companies to see if anyone will step up to the plate to take over the, the golf course. They would maintain it so there's no cost to the village whatsoever. Uh, it would not be a long contract because we have to find out what the residents want here. And uh, we still have to get the engineering company out there. And if they do have to do any work, yes. they'd have to get on the golf course. And so if there's no one that's interested in doing it under those terms, then there would be no special meeting, correct? No, we, we, we still could have the special meeting just to be able to have what ideas the residents want mm -hmm. because we still have to go out and get the engineer and we'd like to know what they'd like to do. For overall parking. Correct. Correct. So with that, we've got the motion set then? Or, okay. 
So I need uh, to call the roll. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Costa? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Motion carries. So, with that, again, like we said, if there's any questions, any concerns, just come see us, call us, talk to us. All our cell phones are online. If you go to the village website, they're all listed. I just got a new phone, I don't remember the number, so I will get that for you. And uh, business cards, are they here now? They are, I think. Okay, so I'll have the business cards out too, but do come to us. Uh, with that, is there any old business? You can't have all this as your goal because it's not. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then basically, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Any second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.